Hello everyone, this is Aaron again. I'm really excited today to share with you an opening, uh, opening of a box of an item that I really, really wanted. Uh, this item completes my optics setup for all hunting and all pesting situations and even some target situations for practice. Without further ado, let me just bring it forward to you and just show you how excited I am. As you can see, I now have the ATN Thor 4 Spark HD Thermo Rifle Scope. This thing here, got a little bit of gleam of light there, trying to get out of there. This thing here is going to allow me to go out and see anything that is moving in complete darkness for hundreds of yards, uh, for larger items, and certainly uh, I'm thinking out to at least 150, 40 yards for everything else. I gave a lot of thought about, about this. And uh, as you all know, if you've been watching my channel, I do have the ATN um, night vision IR set up, 4K. And I was frustrated with that because when I went out, if it's not within the range of the IR lights, it's really, really hard to see. So if you got your situation set up where you're looking at uh, 30 or 40 yards and you got a light that will go about that far and there are things that are out further than that, it's really, really hard to see those things. So I got to thinking, hey, we're driving around the farm looking for um, some raccoons and possums and that sort of things, even rats, and being frustrated and not being able to see anything. With this, I'll be able to sit in one position and scan the whole area and see anything that's moving that is alive. Um, and really be able to help the farmer out more, especially with that raccoon problem and rat problem they seem to be having. So, without any further ado, let's just do this. Let's go ahead and do it. This is an opening box, open box uh, situation. So we're going to go ahead and open this thing up and show you what comes with it and uh, talk about what decision I need to make in terms of what gun I'm going to put it on. Uh, because it's going to have multiple uses, i got to really, really think about the caliber that I'm going to be using, because I am going to be using it on the farm, uh, a, different a different, totally different application than shooting at birds. So the caliber will be able to be higher, uh, because I, don't, I won't be shooting up in the rafters and in the barns and down where cows are feeding and that sort of thing. I can wait for the shot to be a safe shot, so it can be a higher caliber. So without any further ado, let's just take a look at what comes in the box, okay? Let's go. As you can see, this is a ATN Thor 4 Smart HD Thermal Rifle Scope. And, uh, and this thing here, uh, from what I've seen, uh, you know me, I do my research. Uh, I looked up there, but I found a lot of things that have gone wanting with this scope in terms of information about it that I'm going to really, really try to help people who are buying this thing uh, from beginning to end in terms of any frustrations I run into with it. Uh, but as you can see, it has the Smart Optics HD. Uh, it also has a dual core thermal sensor that's supposed to be really, really good compared to the first edition that was out. So let's, let's give the box an open and see what happens here. Okay. Uh, as, we open the, as we open the box, the first thing that I see here, I slide this forward is uh, they have an owner's group where you can go online uh, and talk with other owners, maybe ask questions and that sort of thing. I think that's really, really great. Uh, they have the, uh, the ATN forum where you can go there where people are talking about this scope, probably learn more information about it there. Uh, the, uh, the firmware update with all these scopes, with anything that's electronic like this, when they come out, they may be manufactured and uh, Firmware is a certain thing when they, when they release this, but they're constantly updating this firmware trying to make this better. So when you get it, you're going to have to go online and get the latest firmware for it so to make sure it's working uh, at optimum level. If you're experiencing any problems, they tell you where you can call from 8 to 5 and have any of those problems sorted out for you. Um, and they talk about other additional things they have here. Uh, and one of the ones I might get is this remote. Uh, 
I don't think I'm going to need the battery. This thing already does about eight hours. I'm never going to be in the field longer than that. Okay, so that's, just, that's the information they give you that's just, just helpful to you uh, in terms of owning the gun. Uh, we have here the owner's manual for it that goes through and uh, tells you what everything is and what it does. Everything is broken down out by pages. Uh, tells you what to do first, put the card in for, for recording. Everything is here. How to mount it. And all of the different uh, things in the menu that allow you to uh, to make the scope optimal. So that's very good. Also in here, uh, if you have any problem with your device, let us help. It gives you a place to contact them for that help. This is something I'll never be using. I don't know why anybody would really need it because this thing here, it's not like the old scopes. These things here are going... Uh, for eight hours and no more. I know my ATN uh, 4K goes nine hours easy in the field being on the whole time. So, but the battery pack is available. If you want to get into any of the uh, clothing and hats and stuff, they have a place for you to go and get some uh, some clothing and that sort of thing. Talks again about the owners forum where you can go talk to other owners and get help there. I'm not quite sure this is just a brochure that talked about all the other things that uh, that they have out there. And it is. Talked about all the various things, the lights and different things that they sell. I'll get that name out there. Uh, so, that's all the material that comes with it. It also comes with, comes with a nice case. So I also have one of these with my other one. You can put this thing over the gun. It's got a two-way zip, so it goes over, you can zip it on and protect the scope while it's on the rifle. And it's soft and it's really, really cushy, so it's really going to protect it. And you have some, uh, some cleaning towels, of course, and a little wrench. And then you have the Thor itself. And one thing for when you're hunting at night, you definitely want to have, you definitely want to have this screwed on uh, because it's going to really really allow you to uh, to see that image a lot more clear and uh, you know when I shoot in the daytime when I shoot in the daytime I shoot with um, one eye uh, open with both eyes open I'm not sure at night vision if I'm going to be shooting with one eye closed and one eye open or if I can keep both of them open and, and make this thing make sense but Basically, that is the uh, that is the uh, opening box of the Thor four and uh, by ATN. And the next thing we're gonna do is now is uh, I'm gonna decide what gun to put this thing on, and I'm gonna try to walk you through with me the reasoning of how I came up with the particular gun I did come up with to put this scope on out of the five guns that I have. So let's get to that next. Okay, we're back, and I want to walk you through the process that I used in determining which gun to mount the Thor on. I had the uh, P15 in 25 caliber. I have my Wildcat in 22 caliber, and what I wanted to consider was this. Okay, once I once I mount this Thor on. That gun's going to have limited use. I'm not going to be able to take it to the range and shoot it uh, a lot. I'm not going to be able to shoot it in the backyard a lot. I'm not going to be able to do it. This gun is basically going to be on the shelf until it's needed. But then I thought also that I've been pesting now, uh, and I'm going to be hunting soon, but I've been pesting now for quite a while. And the, the go-to gun for pesting for me on the farms, as you know, is a .177 caliber not to go any higher than that. Um, and I have two guns in that caliber. So those two are ruled out. I need those for, for that. So that, leave, that left them. So it came down to these two. And let me walk through the thought, to walk you through the thought process. Uh, using and making this determination again. 
the, down, the upside of using the 25 is the caliber, 25 caliber is very, very powerful. And um, it's going to uh, do a lot more damage on larger animals than maybe a 22 possibly will. But I have to understand also the application of how I'm going to use this. The thermal will probably be used in three applications at night. One is to shoot large animals, like raccoons and possums, but also to shoot small animals, like rats and pigeons up in the rafters. 25 caliber is way too powerful to be shooting at rats, in my opinion, uh, and especially pigeons up in the rafters. Uh, but not only that, I've taken into consideration the noise, and I don't mean noise of, uh, of the report from the gun, because these two guns are whisper quiet. I mean, this, 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 these, these things virtually quiets the shot. It's the hit that I'm worried about, okay? Cows are very skittish, and in the dark I'm quite sure they may even be more skittish. This 25, when it hits, can be, as, depending on what it's hitting, can be as loud as the 22 shot, okay? And that's just too much noise uh, on impact. I mean, even when it hits another animal, it's loud. So that was ruled out right away. So it left only one gun, and that is my Wildcat. And the reason I'm going to go with the Wildcat, let me move this aside. The reason I'm going to go with the Wildcat is, is, is there's a number of reasons. One, it is the right caliber. Two, the cocking lever on it is, is forward, and I like that. Um, three, it's quiet out of the muzzle, and the 22 report upon the impact isn't nearly, I think it's way less than half that thing. It sounds like it anyway. Uh, even though this is a 22 and that's a 25, it just seems like that thing is much louder. And also, there really is no application for this gun right now, except for hunting. I can't use it on the farm because it's a 22 for, for pesting in the daytime. So that's how I come to my decision of, uh, of what gun to mount this on. Uh, this gun now, this gun is shooting at between 887 and 903. Um, but most of, most of the shots, those are the two high and low ends of it. Most of the shots are right in there around the uh, 890 range, 890s range. So that's more than enough um, to kill any animal I'm shooting at. And I'm going to be mainly taking headshots on bigger animals. So that's how I made my consideration. So we're going to be mounting this scope on the um, Wildcat. And... Um, doing that but let me just say this too that one of the things I run into difficulty with is this and I didn't find anything on it when I looked on the video maybe something I missed tell me this you guys how do you zero a thermal scope I've given it some thought and I come up with some great I think some great ideas for how I'm gonna do it but it never did hit me that hey what I'm shooting it has to be warmer than the other things that are around it at the same time. I need to be able to, when I hit it, see the hit, and I will because that thing's going to move, and know what the miss is so that I can keep on making the adjustments and increment, incremental adjustments until I have this thing zero. So that's the next thing we're going to attack. We're going to attack how the heck do you zero a thermal scope. So that'll be another upcoming video. Um, but right now, I'm going to get this thing mounted, and then my next task is to figure out a way uh, to, to zero this scope. I want to thank you guys for uh, tuning in and um, for your comments, and especially those of you who have subscribed. Uh, it's winter here now, uh, about to be, fall is going to be, uh, it's going to be, I think, uh, we're going to have uh, lots of hunting videos to do. But when winter time comes, it's going to slow way down. So i got to think up some winter projects to keep this thing going to spring. And we'll come up with some things for you. So uh, I want to thank you guys, for again, for tuning in, for your comments, and uh, for all the support. There's a lot of guys out there who uh, who've been following my channel, uh, and, they re and, and, and they respond to, to almost everything I do. And they're so positive. And I want, you guys, I want to thank you guys, especially because you really make my day. Um, I will say this, um, 
I haven't run into any trolls or haters. Uh, every now and then one will bounce up, but for the most part, uh, I try not to uh, respond in a way that's going to make them even want to comment again. I'm not going to do a fall for what they're trying to do. Hey, it's all positive here. It's going to stay that way. So thanks, guys. Thanks again, and uh, keep it safe out there. You know, guys, before I close this video out, uh, I've, had it, I've had it mounted on the uh, Wildcat for a little while now. Still haven't had an opportunity because of the weather to um, zero it yet. But I have I had plenty of opportunities to go outside both in the daytime and in the evening and use this thing. And uh, let me tell you, it's just as effective in the daytime as it is in the evening. It's amazing um, what I found there in terms of being able to use it. When the sun's out, it creates a little bit of a problem because you get glare off the leaves and that sort of thing. And the sun raises that leaves temperature a lot higher. But on cloudy days, uh, especially as it's starting to get cooler here now, this thing is looking at it in the daytime is almost as effective as looking at it at night. It's a little bit better at night because you don't have as many variants in temperatures around, but uh, it works well. So let me let me close this video by giving you some showing you some daytime and some nighttime examples of how this thing works uh, out in the field, so you can get a feel for it. And then my next video will be on how I came up with my. Uh, my way of zero, zero anything. How's that? Okay. So enjoy these videos uh, until next time when I bring you the sighting in uh, video on this store. Thank you. This is a fox squirrel at uh, about 20 yards eating a nut right now. Here's the second one just coming into view. This is daytime. Again, showing you just how effective this thing can be during the day. This girl here is really close, probably, I don't know, 10 yards, it's coming closer. Barry is uh, this acorn. And even closer. I'm going to jump it up on my chair. Put my bipod here. Checking me out. out to his friend that's now about 25 yards away. Here. Okay, here's, this guy here is only a, down by my chair there. He's only about again 10 years, yards away. Anyway, just another example of how effective this gun would be, even in daylight. Two rabbits at 30 yards. See if I can get, see if I can work my way to 20 without them running. We'll play a little virtual game if they let me get to this tree. Okay, I'm there. I would only be able to take out one of them. And I gotta make sure I can fit it between the things, so it'll probably be him. I know you can see that little dot good on TV, but I'm telling you, this little scope, that little dot disappears. Another rabbit at uh, about 25 yards. Another virtual game. I'm on the fence. And his lights would be out right now. This is a squirrel sitting on my little uh, bird's nest, just checking me out. And uh, 25 yards exactly. This is another day shot, uh, just demonstrating how this would be very effective hunting in the daytime. And if you look over there, that, squ that squirrel right there is the dominant squirrel because both of them were over there. And this squirrel here chased off the squirrel that ran over to the yard and went up there and is now sitting there. So. Okay. 
So you can see just how effective this can be. Um, put these back down. He's running back over there to the uh, other pea pile. We will see if this other squirrel would, uh, would tolerate him. No, oh, he's stopping. That is definitely a uh, dominant squirrel over there. As you can see, he's coming back because uh, he does not want to mess with that squirrel. He just tried to beat him up. Got a lot of acorns in the yard, and that's why he's here. So again, just a hunting example. Right, they going to come feed. Now he's back out again. We have we have deer. At 30 yards. Wow. Alright, we're looking out at the door, and there's a rabbit about 35 yards away, sitting there. I'm out tonight just doing some virtual hunting, so we're gonna. Go ahead and uh, pretend that this is a shot at 30 yard, 35 yard. She should be shooting right about there. Pow! <laughs> Getting close to uh, people still got some fireworks left over from the fourth, I guess. But this is why I love this thing. Right now, with him sitting still like that, if I didn't have a real thick IR light, or should I say bright, I wouldn't see him. Especially if he wasn't moving, and I didn't see him move up. I might scan right past him, but this thing, that heat signature cannot be denied. Right here, all you can see is the image. This thing really works well, but I hate the way it does not give you any type of one-off. I got a bell out there to let me know when they show up so I can just watch them and shoot videos of them. So, every time he moves, you're going to hear a little bell in the background. That's how I know he's out there. Okay. And four babies for sure. So... Maybe if I have this one, two, three, four, and a mom. So I think it's four. But this gives you a good idea how you could really get a shot easily with this thing at night. It really works well on big prey. It doesn't work well on small.
that's how big they would look for at 40 yards. But to you lose view of what's going on there. I'm going to scare them and see what they do. Okay, the mother just ran off. And the baby's headed for the tree. Looking for where their mom is. That the mom is coming back. Check on the babies and make sure they're okay. She didn't know what the hell that was. But she didn't run very far. Okay, it's night time. Take a quick look around the neighborhood with this door. Because there's a lot of images out there that are hot and cold. For good contrast. So, this house over there about 70 yards. Tree probably about 60. Garbage can. Something's really warm in that can. Probably water in the bottom. It rained today. And I guess the cold can't get to that kind of insulating the bottom of the cars so the concrete is staying hard. But just, just to look around the neighborhood so you can see that this thing does have some really good good looks at whatever you're looking at at night.